Well, hello there, I'm Nurse Mo, and if we have not met yet, I am so happy to finally meet you. I have a podcast for nursing students and a website for nursing students, so there is a chance that we've met through those things, but regardless, I am so glad that you are here. If you're watching this video, then you are most likely a new nursing student heading into your program, and you're looking for tips and resources so that you can do your best. So in addition to this video, there will be a link below here to a checklist, the new nursing student checklist. And essentially this has all the things that if you go through each of the items on this checklist, you will be so prepared and so ready for what's to come. So I want you to click that link and check that out. But in today's topic, I really wanna dive into how to study for med surge. And med surge is your key nursing class that you will have that basically teaches you how to care for patients with various disease conditions. And it's a lot of information. It's a lot to take in, analyze, and then use in clinical and on exams. So what I'm going to share with you is a very systematic, streamlined way to do that studying for those specific disease conditions, okay? And this method is called the LATTE method. And if you've listened to my podcast for any length of time, you've heard me use it. I practice what I preach. And what the LATTE method does is it really hones in on the most important things that you need to know as the nurse at the bedside. So one of the things and where I really think nursing school fails is and where students struggle is in not knowing how much to study, what to focus on, and schools just throwing everything at you and then leaving you to figure out what's most important. It's too hard for you to figure out what's most important without a framework because you've never done this before. You haven't taken care of a patient or been to nursing school. So the latte method helps you do that and it helps save you so much time. When I developed the latte method, I was a nursing student just like you and spending hours and hours working on these case studies that we were assigned every week from my med surge class. And these case study write-ups would be 14, 15, 18 pages long. It was so much information and it's because we didn't know what was important. So we just included everything and ended up overstudying and wasting a lot of time. So finally, I thought, you know what? What do I really need to focus on here? What is the nurse's role? What is the nurse's job? What is the nurse doing at the bedside? And that's where the latte method came into existence. So what I wanna share with you about the latte method is if you have not yet taken a pathophysiology class, you do need to incorporate the pathophysiology into it. So I guess it's a P latte method. So the very first part is just get a general idea of the pathophysiology of the specific condition so that you understand what's gone wrong in the body for whatever this is, this disease condition to happen. And when you understand what's gone wrong, it makes a lot more sense about how you're gonna try to steer things to getting them back on track. So first step in the latte method is kind of like the pre-homework get that pathophysiology write it out it can be very basic and streamlined but just a general overview okay and then we dive into the latte method itself now the very first letter in the latte method is l and that stands for look so how does the patient look and this isn't just what you see this is how do they present what are they complaining of what are their signs and symptoms basically, okay? And by knowing all the signs and symptoms, how a patient may present, you can start being able to recognize on your exam questions or in clinical, oh, I, I recognize those signs and symptoms. I think this is rheumatoid arthritis. So now I'm gonna think about all the things I know about rheumatoid arthritis. It helps you zero in on your knowledge bank because you know what disease condition it's talking about. So let's do a quick example. Let's say we have someone with the flu. So how would someone with the flu actually look? What would be their signs and symptoms? So they may feel flushed. They may say they have chills. 
They may feel hot to the touch. They may have an overwhelming fatigue that they're complaining of, a headache, runny nose, congested nose, cough, sore throat, muscle aches, things like that. All very common signs and symptoms of the flu. And then the next letter is A. How do you assess someone with this, con with this disease condition? So looking at the flu, how would you assess somebody that has the flu? Okay, you've all probably taken care of yourself when you're sick or a family member. So you would get their temperature, right? Isn't that like the first thing that you do when you feel like you've got something coming on? You take your temp, so get a temperature. Um, as a nurse, you're gonna actually get a full set of vital signs. You want to maybe listen to their lungs, especially if they're coughing a lot or saying they're short of breath. Sometimes flu can have a, a like a pneumonia involvement, so you would listen to their lungs. Assess the quality of their cough. Is it a dry cough? Is it a wet cough? Is it a strong cough? Is it a weak cough? Are they pulling anything up when they cough? You'd want to assess maybe their level of lethargy, if they're having muscle aches and pains, things like that, okay? And then the next letter in the latte method is T, and that stands for tests. What tests are conducted for this particular disease condition? And sometimes there's a whole bunch, and sometimes there's just a couple, and sometimes there aren't any. In the case of the flu, in our example, it's going to be that nasal swab, right? That viral test looking for that flu virus. And then for treatments, the next T is for treatments. How is this disease condition treated? So in the case of our patient with the flu, you know, we're going to give that Tamiflu if it's within that time zone where Tamiflu can be effective. Fluids, rest, maybe a nasal decongestant, probably something for the headache and what was the other thing that they have? Oh, a cough, so maybe a cough suppressant as well. So the treatments for the flu, there you go. And then E is for education. We always are educating our patients or our patients' families and caregivers about their disease conditions and we wanna zone in on those most important things. So with the flu, for example, what types of things would you be teaching? Well, obviously avoiding transmission, right? Preventing the flu is the best thing. Avoiding transmission, um, wearing a mask if you're out in public, wash your hands, don't touch your face. Um, what are some other ones? Cover your cough, cover your sneezes, get your flu vaccine. Like all of those things would be elements of a patient education program for someone with the flu. Okay, so again, top to bottom, the latte method is going to just help you focus in on what you need to know for your exams without over studying, without over complicating things, okay? You're not getting board certified in anything, right? You're not getting board certified in cardiology or endocrinology, but you need to know the basics of heart failure, the basics of diabetes, okay? So L is how the patient looks, basically, the signs and symptoms of this particular disease condition. A is how do you assess the patient? What are those key nursing assessments? How are you going to monitor how, how severe this condition is? How are you going to monitor if your treatments are working? It's from your assessments. The first T is for tests. These are diagnostic tests that the MD will be ordering for that particular disease condition. In our example, we talked about a nasal swab, but for other things, you know, maybe the patient has a pneumonia, then it's going to be diagnostic things like chest x-ray, things like that, or sputum cultures. And then the next T are the treatments. How do we treat this particular disease condition? And the treatments can be, you know, pharmacological. Obviously, that comes into play a lot. They could be surgical. They can also be a lot of just straight up nursing intervention. So for example, if someone's feeling short of breath, an easy nursing intervention, sit them up, right? Sit them up nice and tall, get that lung expansion going. Easy nursing intervention. And then E is for education. How do you educate the patient? How do you educate their caregivers about this particular disease condition? So I've got two links below this video. One of those is to that checklist I mentioned earlier. If you're a new nursing student, you wanna grab that checklist. It's really going to help you get a plan together for getting prepared for nursing school. 
And if you go through this checklist and you do things to get prepared, I promise you within about the first week, maybe even the first few days, you're gonna see a big difference between yourself and those who did not do any kind of prep. And there will be people that do zero prep before school starts. They pay for it. You will feel so much more confident and ready to conquer because it's intense. You'll be ready for that if you do some prep work ahead of time. And then the other link is to that latte method. I've got a template for you that you can download and use over and over and over again and basically use it as a template for making quick study guides for all kinds of disease conditions. So both of those links are below this video and I will see you again very soon. Thanks, bye for now.